Alright, so now that we understand the basic syntax of creating tweens for from tweens or to tweens and stagger tweens, I'm now going to show you how to put them all into a timeline and explain why a timeline is important before we actually build one, alright? So here I just want to show you how this fun little animation where uh, this background fades in, some text comes up, and all these threads show up, and this time thing slides across. I've made the animation pretty slow so that I can talk through it and we can sort of understand what's going on, and the whole thing doesn't just finish in half a second and we don't know what happened. Now, before we go through the code and why it's important to use a timeline, I just want to go to the HTML real quick and make sure you understand what all the different targets of these tweens are going to be. So when I'm teaching, I like to keep the HTML and CSS super simple, all right, because we want to focus just on the JavaScript API. But I also want to make sure, you know, that you understand what we're moving around. So here I have a div with an ID of demo, and that's basically everything inside this rectangle. Demo has a background image that has that little space landscape in it. And then next I have an image with the ID of title, and that's where we have meet the freds. And below that, we have a div with an ID of Freds. And those are these guys right here, okay? So they're all in the same div, and they're all just a bunch of images, okay? We got a bunch of different SVG images of different colors, keeping it real simple. And once we're done with all those Freds, there's another image with an ID of Time, and that's this little Sundays at 9 p.m. thing that's gonna slide in. Everything that we're animating is basically an image or a div that has an ID, all right? And the names are super clear. So let's jump over to the JavaScript code and I'll show you why it doesn't work so good outside of a timeline. All right, so over here in the JavaScript code, I have what I like to call a bunch of loose tweens, all right? They're just sitting here, and the only reason why they run in sequence is because they each have a delay that represents the duration of the previous tweens. So they run in a nice little sequence, but if for some reason I want the title to come in super slow, uh, like maybe I make it four seconds long instead of one, uh, that means if I still want the freds to come in immediately after, I then have to add three seconds to the delay of that tween, making it five, and I have to add three seconds to the delay of the last tween, making it eight. So when I made one simple change to the timing, I had to make like three other changes to delays. So now Meet the Freds comes in super slow, and then the Freds come in, and then you have the time thing slide in. So it was a lot of work just to change the timing of one thing. Now let's say that for this time thing, maybe I really wanna like, you know, put a different ease on there, do something different. Well, if I say something like, you know, ease of, uh, we'll just keep it simple, I'll say bounce, because that's easy to tell what's happening. Well, when I go to test this now, it's gonna be a big pain in the neck that I have to sit through this really slow and horrible animation a zillion times uh, just to see what that change was. So when I use a timeline, I'll be able to jump exactly to that point and it's awesome. Uh, another problem with this setup of using loose tweens is that if I want to repeat the animation or control it or play it or pause it, um, I can't just give all of these tweens here individual names and then tell them all to pause at the same time and reverse. It just wouldn't work at all. So a timeline is going to solve these types of problems. And as we go through the course, I'm going to show you exactly how efficient timelines are going to be in your day-to-day -day production. So let's jump into this and build this file the right way using a timeline. 